Hello and welcome to our session on the Advanced Custom Fields plugin. I'm Ian Paulson, the Product Manager for ACF at WP Engine, and I'm here joined by Rob Stinson, who's our Product Marketing Manager. Today we're going to take you through a fairly rapid session of seven things you didn't know you could do with the Advanced Custom Fields plugin. Some things that are fairly new and some things that are lesser known. And functionality that we're going to center around a fictitious site that Rob has designed. So we're fans basically of real examples rather than abstract stuff, but we're also big fans of movies. So this site is a celebration of the best period of cinema, probably, arguably, the movies of the 90s. And so the site is based around recognizing and awarding the most popular uh, and the best loved films of the 90s. The site needs to showcase movies and allow users to vote for their favorite. And in true Rob style, the site looks great. So let's get started and start from the beginning and get ACF installed. Tell me how, Rob. Cool. Thanks, Ian. Yeah, thanks, man. It does look pretty good, doesn't it? It's been a good bit of time designing it. Had some fun. So we've won the contract, we've got the projects, and we're kicking things off. And the first thing uh, we've done is we've identified that this makes sense. Firstly, for ACF, you know, we've got, uh, we're going to need uh, to set up a whole bunch of custom fields for some custom post types and do some interesting templating and stuff like that. ACF is the tool for the job here. So of course, we first need to install ACF and that is number one here. So typically we know that you could just grab the plugin as a zip file and upload it into the WordPress um, admin nice and simply. That's the standard way of installing a plugin. But we also know that um, developers these days like to manage their dependencies a little bit differently. I like to typically manage it within the code and within PHP world, that's typically done with Composer. Now you've been able to install um, uh, WordPress plugins from the wordpress.org repo for some time quite easily with Composer, um, but it's been a little bit harder to do with uh, premium plugins like ACF Pro. But the most recent release um, a couple of weeks ago, actually about, about a month ago, um, we've actually enabled the ability to install ACF Pro now via Composer, which is fantastic. So we're going to do that right now. So how to do this is step number one, uh, you need to add our or the ACF Pro Composer repo URL to your composer.json file. Step number two is you're going to create an auth.json file for your credentials, and you're going to place that in the root of your um, of your project, both locally and on where you know wherever you're deploying to. And the um, credentials that you need for that file are now available in the account area on your account area on advancedcustomfields.com. So if you log in, you'll see a licenses area and there's a few extra um, tabs and stuff like that. You can grab, actually you can just grab the whole you know, chunk of code, copy and paste the whole thing, or you can grab the individual username and password and bring it over to uh, the file that you've created, the auth.json file. And the third step, you run the composer command. So that's nice and easy. Um, three-step process, but it's fantastic because it means that, like I said, like developers who like to sort of have a little bit more fine-tuned control over how they manage the dependencies of their project, you can now do this with ACF Pro, which is fantastic. Of course, there's more documentation on it, so to just go deeper and just to see how it all unpacks, um, jump over to the docs on the website and you should be good to go. Cool, I'm gonna throw over to Ian now for number two. Right, now let's talk about setting up the data for the site. So custom post types, uh, they're pretty fundamental in WordPress in how you build a site that isn't just about posts or pages. It's it's the custom post type uh, feature that came in whatever WordPress version way back, turns it into a proper CMS. Um, and it's usually the first step that developers do when they're building out the sites. So, and that's always been something that's happened outside of ACF historically. You either register a post type with code or use another plugin to do that. Um, but it's... It's the part of the journey that connects quite well with ACF. So as part of uh, ACF 6.1, that functionality is coming to the plugin. So it's, it's the natural sort of starting point of the journey. You want to build uh, a site with data, structured data. You're going to build a post type. You're going to add fields to it. And then you might uh, you know, add some taxonomies. But And then you start editing that data. So yeah, that's something we've put into 6.1. Uh, and it's... Well, it's, it's pretty exciting to have that full flow of building a CMS. So let's look for, for the VHS award site. 
we're going to need to to structure our data and and get WordPress doing what we need it to do. So, in terms of the post type, because we don't want to use posts and pages, we're going to create a custom post type for movie to store the movie data, the data object or the data model. But obviously, in WordPress terms, that's a custom post type. We're gonna we want to classify the movies with a taxonomy so we can allow users to easily see um, movies of a type of genre. And then you're going to get the kind of the easy front end viewing, um, the simple URLs that allow you to access movies of certain genres. And we're going to need some extra fields to store structured data around a movie. So we want, for example, the director is a text field. We'll, we'll need the year that the movie came out as a number. And we're going to need uh, some form of relationship to relate movies to each other. And of course, we need to store the number of votes that it's going to get. Uh, and that's a number field. So let's just have a quick look in ACF 6.1, how we're going to do that. So you, this is this is the ACF um, 6.1 screen. And you'll notice it's slightly different. We've got the menu on the sidebar. It's ACF now, not just custom fields. And this is the post type screen. So this is just me setting up the movie post type. Uh, it's but the simplest workflow here of just adding a singular label for the post type, which is movie, the plural label. And it's automatically generated the post type key. Um, the public setting is set on as default um, because I want it visible in the front end, the post type, and I want to be able to edit it in the admin. So once that's saved and added, the nice thing about the connection here with ACF is the fact that the next step in the journey is we've created the post type. Do we want to add fields to the post type or do we want to link existing fields to the post type? or create a taxonomy. So we can do that all from that point here. So, and obviously we do need to go and add those fields. Okay, so clicking on that notice to add new fields to the movie post type, we get the field group editor um, and it's pre-populated down at the bottom in the settings uh, meta box. So the location rules are set already to say, show these fields when you're editing the post type of movie. Um, and then you can go ahead and add your fields, which I've already done here in the screenshot. So we've got the director, the year and the votes and the related movies. Then of course we can register the custom taxonomy that we talked about adding the genre um, and connecting the genre taxonomy to the post type of movies. But these are fields that we've added that are attached to the movie object. But what about fields that we need to store data that might be more global or site-wide? Rob, what have we got for that? Cool, thanks for that Ian. Looking good, our content model is coming along nicely, but we're not done yet. Now we've already covered you know, installing ACF via Composer, ACF Pro via Composer. And we just looked at custom post types and custom taxonomies in ACF. Now those two things there are very, very fresh. But the third thing I wanna cover now, it's an oldie, but a goodie. And it's, so it's been in the plugin for quite a number of years now, um, but not everyone knows about it and not everyone fully understands the value of this. So we're gonna look now at global fields uh, with the options page. Now, typically you think about a custom field and how it stores data for a particular post or a page or a custom post type. But sometimes we have a need to store data that is associated sort of site-wide. And a great example on our wonderful VHS Awards site is this kind of like top notification or promotional bar. And this is a bar that we wanna persist across every single page of the site home page, you go to a movie page, it's there, you go to the about page or a contact page or a blog page, this little bar sits across the whole site no matter where the, you know, the user navigates to. So this doesn't make sense to associate that relevant data with a post or a movie, it's something that should be associated with the site. So we wanna be able to you know, toggle this bar on and off because we wanna set things up, but perhaps we only wanna turn this on at certain times of the year you know, we might have a particular promotion or a campaign. So we want the ability, you know, to have a Boolean field so we can toggle this thing on and off. Also, we want to be able to update the text, you know, of the, you know, the call to action itself or, you know, in the button. So of course, custom fields make a lot of sense for that. Now to set up an options page, which is what the feature is in within ACF, which allows us to do this. Step number one is, you know, typically in your, you know, functions.php file, or you, or you can of course register it elsewhere, perhaps in, your, in a plugin that you're developing, um, but you are going to register uh, the options page itself. And yeah, there's a few little configurations around in the settings there, 
um, that you can do. You can have a single options page, but you can also actually have multiple and you have them sort of nested. So child pages or parent pages and things like that. So you can do interesting things. For ours, ours is pretty simple. We're just setting up a notification bar here. So we just need the single page. So step one is register that options page. Step two, as we would normally, we would create a field group, like we call it, you know, promo bar fields or something like that, or notification bar fields. And you can see there, I've got my Boolean field at the top, you know, so true or false is the promo bar active. And then I've got a, a, a text field for message, a text field for the button text, a URL field for the button link. Um, and then we might have a notice type as well, but perhaps we want to have like alerts or promotional um, style notices. And perhaps we do some interesting conditional styling based on whichever is selected there. So we, we add out field group and we add out fields. And step three is just down below that, as you know, in the location rules, we can now select um, options page is equal to, and you see the site settings that I've got there. That is the options page that I registered in step number one. And so with all that done in the WordPress admin now, we see over on the left-hand side in our admin bar, we've got site settings and we click on that and we see all the fields as we would expect. And we can turn the, turn the notification bar on or off. We can update the text, update the button. And then that will get, you know, make, that data will be made available to our templating. And so the templating experience with data or fields within an options page is broadly the same as what you would do otherwise. Uh, there's a couple of little nuances around how you specifically target uh, the fact that this is an options page and not a post, but jump into the documentation on advancedcustomfields.com and it walks you all through how to handle that. Number four, I'm gonna throw it back to you, Ian. Thanks, Rob. Yeah, I just wanna now talk about how we programmatically register fields with ACF. So creating fields in ACF, it's super easy with the field editor user interface, the kind of thing we know and love we've seen earlier on. Um, but there are other ways to define fields. ACF allows us to export um, both JSON and PHP files with field definitions, and that can be used to create fields. But did you know that we actually, there is in the ACF community, uh, a package called the ACF Builder that allows you to create fields using kind of a fluent API with PHP code um, it's actually a third party package and it's called the ACF Builder package from Stout Logic. So, this, um, yeah, the, the GitHub links there. Basically, it allows you to create fields straight from code um, without knowing kind of the intricacies of how ACF needs the field, the field data um, in PHP. It uses um, a really kind of expressive way of you doing that. It makes it reusable and portable. Um, you can commit the field definitions because it's PHP files to your version control. It's easy to collaborate. It's easy to send to your deployment mechanism. Um, and you also kind of take away the field group editor UI. So you're defining those fields in code that then stops clients from having to touch the UI. Mm -hmm. um, so let's, yeah, let's have a quick look how we do, we do it. To install it, because it's a, a, a package, we talked about Composer earlier. Um, this is a, a composer package that you can install with the following command. Composer requires stout logic, you know, the vendor slash ACF builder. And then this is this is what the code looks like. You're kind of instantiating an instance of the fields builder and you're giving it the slug of the what would be the field group. And then you're saying in this field group, let's add a text field called director. Let's add a number field called year. And then importantly, we're going to set the location for the field group to appear on the post type of movie. Um, and all of this is kind of done, it, it does a lot for you without you having to think about it. So you, you give it the director name for the field label and it will go ahead and obviously create the slug or the key for the field um, without you having to, to add that. So it takes away a lot, of, um, a lot of typing, a lot of thinking and a lot of sort of error prone um, creation. And, and then the second part, is where you you load that that field definition into ACF and it will build the field group out for you. All right, so number five here, bi-directional relationships. Now this is interesting. I think I remember this specific project I worked on back in the day in my agency days where I actually figured this out and it was kind of a it's kind of a game changer. So th if this is it's not something you've done with ACF before, pay attention because this is a really useful thing. So 
Let, let's look at an example. Like we're looking at our, of course, our VHS awards site. We've got a, a roster of say a hundred films and there's different ways of obviously connecting these things. We have our genre, ta uh, custom taxonomy before. We might have some couple of different fields that sort of uh, you know handle uh, things like tags or grouping. So bi-directional relationships are useful when you want to create a specific type of two-way connection between two posts or in our case, two movies. So for an, our example, let's just say we've got these three films in our database and they're all animated. So we want to create a bi-directional relationship with them. Now, what that means is that say we've got, you know, um, our first film here, Toy Story, great movie. Um, and we identify that there's two other related films that we want to associate that. So we could uh, create a relationship field uh, for uh, our custom post type, which is movies. And we would have a relationship field there and we would um, select um, the movie, you know, The Lion King and Princess Mono. I'm so sorry. I, I've been, I keep stumbling over this word. I'm butchering it. It's, the film's called Princess Mono no <laughs> Please don't hate me. I'm just struggling to pronounce that word for some reason. Um, and we identify that these two films are related. So we select them from the relationship field. Now, in this instance, it would make sense that, yes, The Lion King, for example, is related to Toy Story. And therefore, Toy Story is related to The Lion King. So, you know, perhaps normally we would go over to The Lion King, you know, edit screen, and then we would find Toy Story and we would um, add it there. But we're doubling up our work there. So what a bi-directional relationship does is that it automatically creates that connection for us, which is really, really useful. So once we add, you know, for instance, the Lion King to the toy to Toy Story, Toy Story is automatically added to the Lion King, and that's that's really, really useful. It saves a lot of time for content creators and content managers. It reduces the risk of you know forgetting or like perhaps you might remove one from one post and then forget to remove it from the other. It really, really simplifies the content editing experience. So a really useful thing that can be used, especially on interesting sites like this one. So how do we do that? Well, there's two ways to do this currently. And I'll talk about a third thing maybe that's coming down the track later this year. So how it's done is uh, number one is you can do this in code. So just with the ACF Pro plugin installed, you can um, write code to do this and you can write a function that hooks into the ACF update value filter. And this filter runs before a value is saved. And basically what it does is it grabs the current post that you're editing and identifies the post ID of the post that's been added and it updates the other post and does that sort of matching in the background for you. So quite useful, a little bit of code. So as long as you're comfortable with that, it's not too heavy lifting. But again, there's a link there or a URL that you can check out in the advanced custom fields docs to, um, to see how you can do that. Option two though, is no code, which is kind of nice some of the time. So this is actually a community plugin or an ecosystem plugin called ACF Extended. It is available on wordpress.org. And what it does is it just brings that feature um, into the, the, you know, the, the ACF UI itself. So if you've installed this extension, ACF Extended, and you've got ACF Pro installed, um, you'll see an option that when you create a relationship field, um, there is a bi-directional toggle that you can turn on and then you can establish that two-way collection right there from within the UI, which is pretty handy. Now, things are coming along really interestingly with this project, but let's not lose our head with it. Um, or should we? Ian, over to you. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Yeah, it is worth calling out uh, headless when it comes to, to ACF. ACF has headless support. So, yeah, underlying headless sites, decoupled nature of sites. There's a lot of API um, communication going on. And ACF has API support. The, the REST API we added natively into ACF as of 5.11 or 5.11. And we support WP, well, we support GraphQL with WP GraphQL plugin, um, which has a, an ACF add-on for WP GraphQL. So ACF supports, uh, you know, headless sites. It has integration with the WP Engine Atlas program for, for proper headless WordPress sites. But let's talk about just a kind of a real world example of how you would take the data that's in our VHS WordPress site and, and, and use it in a decoupled way. So, you know, for example, hear me out. People are basically voting on the VHS award site uh, and they're gonna be, I think, 
we've put an arbitrary date. They've got to vote till the end of uh, this certain date and we'll see what's the most popular. We've got our local cinema and it's doing a double bill of the most voted 90s movies. So they've got at the cinema, they've got their billboard um, and it's online. It's connected to the web and we can dynamically power what is showing on that billboard. So we need to connect to our WordPress site. Um, yeah, for example, the billboard is a simple node app. We need to fetch the data from the VHS site. So let's just have a quick look how we might do that with a custom REST API endpoint. And as I said before, we've got GraphQL support. It, it can be done sort of both ways, but this is a probably a simpler um, example to show. So first off, we'll create a function that basically gets the data that we need. So just going through this, it's a, it's a WP query that is saying, I want movies or post types of the of type movie. I only want two, but I also want to order it by the ACF um, field, which is the, the field name is votes, and we're ordering it um, in a set descending order. So we're going to get the top and we're going to get the top two. And then next, we'll create a custom rest endpoint, which is using the callback function that we created in the previous slide. Um, and that is just going to give us a URL, an endpoint that we can hit to go and get the two movies. So what that actually looks like in, in reality, um, this is just testing. So the URL is vhsawards.local, the WP hyphen JSON, and then we gave it a namespace of VHS version one in case we ever want to change the API. And we've just got a very simple URL structure of popular. And that is just returning a JSON um, object with two, two items, the top two, top two voted ones, which just so happen to be uh, Fight Club and Goodfellas, which are pretty good. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's definitely good to show how ACF powers decoupled and headless sites. But it's pretty hard to talk about WordPress at the moment without mentioning blocks. I can't believe we've got so far without even mentioning blocks. What have you got for us, Rob, to change that? We definitely need to talk about blocks. Uh, before I do, I realized that just before when we were looking at number five around um, bidirectional relationships. I hinted at a third way of doing it. I didn't hit, I didn't, didn't cover it. So um, all I want to say is watch this space because we're planning, we have on the roadmap to look at adding better bidirectional relationship support natively into the plugin itself. So you can facilitate that stuff just within um, the ACF plugin without the need for, you know, third party stuff. So just watch this space, no commitments on timing. Um, that is something that we're looking at. So number seven, yes. Let's look at creating a custom block with ACF. Now, most people know that you can do this in ACF now, but not necessarily everyone has tried it. So if you're in that camp and you're a long-time ACF user, but you haven't used the custom block functionality now, watch this because it may just prompt you to see the value in this feature. But you know, how are we going to use this with the VHS awards? Perhaps we want to have a block or a component for our site that we can add various places. And that's the beauty of a, you know, a custom block, right? Or, or any block is that it can be used and placed on pages and posts throughout the site. And we want to create a custom call to action block. Now, this is a, you know, a, a pretty simple block and you can definitely do more interesting things with custom blocks. We'll keep it simple now. But this blue sort of banner call to action block, we want to be able to place on the homepage and maybe on some blog posts and things like that, encouraging the readers and the site visitors to click that button and go through and vote for their favorite 90s film. So how would we build this custom block with ACF? And the reason we're doing it as a custom block is it's got a unique design to it. You know, it's got this interesting background gradient going on for this, this you know, repeating dot pattern. And we realized, you know, it's, it's easier for us to build this out as the custom block with that fine tuned control that that gives us versus what we could perhaps do with blocks that are off the shelf with WordPress core. So how do we do this? Step number one is we register our custom block, uh, typically in functions.php or wherever you're sort of writing this kind of code, nice and simple. And we point to the directory of where the template files will ultimately be for our custom block. So that's step number one. Step number two, we create our field group and we add our fields. So for our, our call to action block, we wanna have text, button text, button link, and background color as well. We perhaps we wanna give the option for some some variation on styling for this. Number three is we're gonna, in the location rules, we're gonna select block and we're gonna say is equal to, and we've registered the 
CTA block just previously, and that's why it's available to us there in that dropdown. Now we move to our template file. So all the, the fields and everything are set up, and now we're gonna be doing some our templating. Our templating is different in some ways to how you would perhaps traditionally template, template with ACF, but in many other ways, it's very, very similar. So a lot of the patterns that you typically employ for your development, you'll be using uh, as you build out your custom block, fantastic. So we will, we, in our projects, say it's our, you know, our custom theme, we have a blocks directory, then we have a CTA directory, which is matches, which matches our, the block that we have registered. And then typically you would have three template files, block.json, uh, you know, something.php, which is our, you know, HTML and markup, and then .css for our styling. So this is the block.json. And this is sort of where we start to, we've registered the block, but this is sort of how we configure things a little bit more. And there's a lot you can do here um, around configuration and various you know, uh, native core features that you can toggle on or turn off, make available to your custom block. So definitely check out the documentation on this and understanding what can be done, because this is uh, really where you can, yeah, like I said, configure how that block is made available and displays and the features, um, the core features that you can pass through to your custom block. Uh, we then have our template file, our PHP file, and you can see here I'm just sort of setting up variables, interacting with, um, you know, get field, interacting with the, you know, our, our field data there. Um, a little bit of very simple conditional logic on our styling there, and then our HTML um, for our block itself. And then I'm not going to walk through the CSS. You know what CSS is. And I'm sure you could probably write better CSS than what I've written here, but you get the idea. You have a CSS file for the styling um, of your, you know, for, the, for your of your block. And you can see I've done some interesting things around fonts um, and you know the radial gradient background for that sort of dot background, which is kind of fun. But again, like we, the reason we're creating this custom block is because we wanted to sort of really fine tune our CSS, our styling, so we could really, you know, um, you know, implement the the design that we're working towards. And just to show you what this looks like in the editor, you can see we can select our call to action block in a light up wide. We can interact with our fields, add the text for the, the text and the button and add a link for the button as well. And that is a very nice looking custom block for which we can pass through to our content editors. Yeah, thanks Rob. What a good looking site. We really do need to put that live. That is, that's awesome. Right, let's just go over what we've talked about today. So we went through how to install ACF Pro, but with Composer. Um, we talked about how to register custom post types and taxonomies in ACF. We uh, looked at registering global or site-wide fields with an options page. And we've looked at a different way to register fields programmatically with a package. Rob's de delved into relationships and how to create bi-directional relationships. And we've touched on headless with ACF. And Rob's now just done a, a great example of creating a custom block with ACF with hardly anything apart from some PHP, HTML, and CSS and no React at all going on. So that's that's really good. This has been great, Rob. Um, what are what are the votes? What have we come out as? Look, for me, it comes down to this. The greatest film of the 90s is undeniably Robin Williams' hook. Uh, a lot of nostalgia wrapped up for me in that. I love that film. What about you, Ian? Oh, for me, it's got to be Kevin Costner's Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Like, it's it's a classic. Forget the bad hair, the mullets, the dodgy English accent, which isn't even an English accent. It's the greatest Robin Hood film of all time. And that is a hill I'm willing to die on. <laughs> no, fair enough. Look, thanks, everyone, for hanging out. I uh, hope you learned something. And look, we're really looking forward to seeing what you build with ACF. Cheers.